Epileptic seizures, unable to hold down a job. Colin Trainer was forced to rely on benefits. But when he was assessed by the government's fitness to work programme, carried out by the private firm Atos, he was told he was well enough to work. He appealed the decision and the Department of Work and Pensions eventually admitted they'd got it wrong. But too late. Mr Trainer had by then died of a massive seizure. His parents say they're in no doubt that the stress and anxiety of losing his benefits contributed to his death. Our social affairs editor Jackie Long reports on one family's experience of a system under scrutiny. Colin Trainer was just a baby when he had his first seizure. He was five when they finally diagnosed epilepsy. Fitting sometimes several times a day, by the time he left school, he'd accepted a life that was severely limited. He had to accept he'd never work. He, he, he really, really did want to work. He did want to work, my son. He was restricted in such a lot of things. He lived just here at number 31. And the point was that you could keep an eye on him? Yes, and... yes, I could come in and... Uh, Care for him and... In November last year, Colin was called for one of the government's work capability assessments to establish whether he was still entitled to extra benefit because of his condition. The assessment, carried out by the IT company Atos for the Department for Work and Pensions, deemed him fit to work. A month later, he received this letter telling him his benefit would be cut by £70 a week. It kept saying, what, ma'am, what, what am I going to do? I, I've, I've got bills to pay. I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. And I says to him, Colin, don't get excited. You, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I said, we can appeal. And the family did appeal. But as the months passed and they heard nothing, Colin's health deteriorated. His parents said he became incredibly anxious and withdrawn and began to lose weight. One morning in April, when he hadn't appeared for a doctor's appointment, Ray let himself in to his son's house. I opened the door. And his alarm wasn't on, and obviously his door was bad, so I knew he was in somewhere. So I'm shouting him. Come on. He was shouting him. And when he went in the bedroom, he was on the floor at the side of the bed. And I went in and I tried to revive him. He was dead. There's nothing I could do. Yeah. You acknowledge that with the illness Colin had, I mean, he could have died at any moment. Of course. Yeah. Of course we do. Of course I do. Right, that's all. Yeah, I know that. But you absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe that the stress through the present system we have for people with disabilities, mentally or disabled. I firmly believe, 100% believe, that the system this government have killed my son. And I do too. And I will never change that. Never change it. Rita phoned the Department for Work and Pensions to inform them Colin had died. She says she was staggered to later find out an adjudicator had overturned the original decision and that he should never have had his benefit withdrawn. The letter confirming it arrived five weeks after he had died. If Colin, if Colin had, had, had had the appeal in a short period of time, that would have took a lot of stress off Colin, a lot of worry of it would. I don't want some government minister telling me what he can do. You know, some, some pen pusher in London, they don't even know my son. They've no idea how he lived, they've, they've no idea whatsoever. Colin Trainer was one of two million people being put through the hugely controversial work capability assessment the government has repeatedly rebutted criticism that it's solely about cutting the benefit bill. The former employment minister, Chris Grayling, said it's about getting people back to work, about saving lives, not saving money. Colin Trainer's parents and many others disagree. They've made their argument pretty clear that people who are able to work should be working. Right, that's right, that yeah. People shouldn't be languishing no, on benefits. That's right. Rightly so. I agree with that 100% and I do agree with it, yeah? But the problem is you've got you've, you've got to change the system what you've got today. You've got to stop other the people going through. The wrong. assessment is wrong. It's got to... And it's got to be pretty clear. I have no doubts about it. There's other people like my son out there with different illnesses and they're going through the same. I mean, people are dying.
Well, we did ask for work and pensions for an interview tonight, but no one was available. In a statement, the DWP said, a decision on whether someone is well enough to work is taken following a thorough face-to-face -face assessment and after consideration of all the supporting medical evidence from the claimant's GP or medical specialist. We encourage people to provide as much medical evidence as possible when they apply for employment and support allowance, and often people who are found fit for work only provide the necessary evidence when they ask for a reconsideration or an appeal. Also in a statement, Atos said, although we cannot comment on individual cases, we want people to know that our trained doctors, nurses and physiotherapists strictly follow the guidelines given to them by the government when conducting assessments and make no decisions on a person's eligibility for benefits.